Now, normally on Lost Battlefields, I'll take you guys with me to where a battle took place or some interesting historical actual facility. However, and you will come to understand me saying this, there's something really interesting I want to talk to you about. And we are going to Las Vegas. Not a lot of battles took place there, but forgive me for a minute and bear with me. We're going to a museum where there's a very specific piece of kit located that I want to talk about because I think there's more to it than what we have been told through mainstream history. I'm sure you've heard that story before. And as opposed to going to the actual battlefield where I possibly would expose myself to gobs of radiation and become infertile and possibly lose all my hair, at least allow me to have one child before I do this, and then we'll see. Like I said, there's a lot of really cool and interesting places hiding out here in Las Vegas. One of them is the Atomic Museum. I'm talking about all the test detonations and the atomic stuff in general. Don't know what it is, never been there. So I think we should go have a look because, believe it or not, atomic power, atomic energy, atomic weapons, it changed the world and all started at World War II. During the Cold War, we were in a constant battle with the Russians over technological advances. And to that end, we did not shy away from any means. And certainly, nor did they from putting lives at risk over national security. Now, we still do, but at least we no longer march on suspecting soldiers through a radioactive mushroom cloud. Should take your kids at a certain age. When you go visit Vegas, take them here and teach them part of history. Probably not gonna talk much about it in the schools, but they need to learn because atomic energy, atomic weapons has such a big part of our lives today and a big part of lives for you and your parents. After all, wars were fought and ended because of this and a cold war was fought to not make it hot. A lot of the guys that fought that Cold War were credited, talked about in the museum in here. So come on in here and have a look, see what it is, take your time, read the signs. And then after that, you go up to the German place up here and you have a really damn good piece of strudel. The museum is full of very interesting pieces of technology, memorabilia from this whole era of testing various nuclear weapons, devices, and playing around with what radioactivity was and trying to control the atom. Okay, Julian, for, uh, if you want to look for atomic test sites or probably things, you don't want to go look for them. Well, I might. It's a fascinating place, and there's so many people who worked hard, diligently, and in complete secrecy that it's worth going to this museum just to honor them because they really did lead the battle, the secret battle of the Cold War. So many people are hiding in the dark of the Cold War corners, you'll never know their names, and they kept the Cold War from getting hot for so many years. I think it's time for all these unsung heroes to get their names out, and if you see them like this, it's a perfect place to do it. Oh, you can't have one. 
Strange Love was still the best movie made. And this is where it all ended. The Berlin Wall, 89. Now it's in Europe when that came down. I think I was basically looking at pretty girls or something and didn't really understand what was going on. Not a mistake I made on 9-11. I was in uniform, I knew exactly what was going on. you got to pay attention to the news because when shit happens, you need to know and understand what's going on. And you cannot be buried on Facebook and Instagram and hope that the news you get there is correct. you really got to pay attention to that and history so you know when events happen around you, you can at least tell your grandchildren that you were there. This is, um, this, this stuff is uranium glass with a glaze. Alpha emitter. And then we put it over some beta. Oh, this pa paper is kind of warm. My favorite memory, my first computer. Of course it was a gift because I'm not that old. And right here is the thing I wanted to show you. Because I think there's a little more to this specific piece of kit. Standing here looking innocently. I'm not going to be a conspiracy nut. But in 1963 they were working on an atomic rocket engine. And you're telling me that today, we haven't made that work? We still use solid fuels to shoot things into space? Really? Here's something I know about the nuclear jet engine. They made it work. They made it work back in the 60s. And as soon as they made it work, they had to test for successful tests. They shut everything down and let everybody go. Really? Spend millions and millions of dollars on making a nuclear rocket engine. You make it work, you shut down the program. Come on now. No, 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 no. I'm not saying we always want to know what our government is doing, and believe me, having spent enough years in uniform, I'm telling you, things are done in national security that should be kept under wraps that you don't need to know about. But there are things we probably should. I wonder what they are. I want to know. Go to Washington and ask. I'll let you know what my PayPal is for the bail money I'll need for when I start going to the NSA asking about the nuclear rocket engine. Uh, it'll be posted on my Facebook site. Out in New Mexico, starting in the mid-50s, they started working on the nuclear rocket project. Several prototypes were built, starting with the code name Kiwi, at the time being tested at Jackass Flats. Yes, I know. I'm sure it has something to do with those. In Nevada in 1962, the Kiwi test series ended with success, proving the concept worked and could be made to work in space travel. The nuclear rocket heats hydrogen as opposed to burning fuel, it means that at the same temperature you can produce far more thrust in an atomic rocket. And in 1962, the atomic rocket was over twice as efficient as any solid or liquid fueled rocket. Now, the possible downside of the use of nuclear rockets is that we would probably use uranium 235, which is very radioactive, which is very bad, as we have been shown time and again through history. Now, uh, remember, I am not an atomic scientist or even remotely intelligent. I'm just a historian and I know something. We could possibly use thorium instead of uranium. Thorium is not really radioactive. It's far cheaper and is readily available. Now, of course, to the detriment of my friends in the arms industry, thorium cannot be weaponized, only used for fuel and energy. As a side note, that would probably alleviate a whole lot of our energy crisis away from fossil fuels like coal. 
if we built more atomic power plants and used thorium, we would have all the benefit, not all the risk and downside to radioactivity. Something even the Nazis dabbled with in 1944. So why is it we haven't done that today? Or maybe we have and no one told us. If you figure it out, do let me know, will you? The next series of testing started labeled NERVA, N-E-R-V-A, lasting until the early 70s, where a nuclear rocket engine had to be configured into a self-contained engine. The reactor powering the engine was fission of uranium-235. In 1966, the self-contained engine was operating over 110 minutes with success delivering 75,000 pounds of thrust during the Phoebe test series and several engines could be assembled side by side if you needed more thrust. This was based on the goal to use these for space travel to Mars as it was then stated. And then what happened? Well, they spent billions of dollars and everybody agreed it was a success, it was proof of concept, it worked, it could be put to use. So of course, they officially did what they always do, they shut down the project. And that was it. Or did they put it in a black bag and have they been traveling off Earth with the nuclear rocket engine powering vehicles for the last couple of decades? Interestingly enough, NASA just recently announced they would dust off old tech and bring back the nuclear rocket engine with the goal specified in getting us to Mars, just like what they said in 1965. As a matter of fact, the exact same wording. Well, don't know what to make of it, but I always said there's a lot more to it than what we've been officially told. This may be one of them, or maybe it's just an old idea that was good and proven and went into the bag to be dusted off. I hope you enjoyed this lost battlefield. Soon I will pop out to Poland, German, Austria and look for something very specific and I will bring you some very, very interesting videos from it and I hope I won't get too close to any radiation because I do enjoy my hair. Have a great day.